All right. So welcome everybody to APIs 101 with Postman. We're going to learn some API essentials. Do, 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 do. I'm May. I'm the student community manager at Postman. So I've been here for about three months now. Um, but I've always kind of worked in ed tech before working here. I was at GitHub Education. And before that, I was at code.org. Ooh, we got a chat going on and I love it. Um, yeah, so I love talking to students and I love teaching. And this is the perfect job for me because I get to do stuff like this. All right, so this is our agenda for the day. So we're going to talk about an intro to APIs in Postman and kind of set the tone and stage for what an API is, why people are using it, all of that kind of good stuff. And then we're going to get into the weeds of it with requests and responses. We're going to have an opportunity to try a couple of things out. I'm going to give you some follow up resources and at the end we'll have time for Q&A. But if you have any questions throughout, please put it in the chat. So. What is an API? Um, does anybody want to take a quick stab at this before we get into it? Just an idea of what an API is. I can try. It's a thing that you ask for something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ask for things with it. That's a, that's a good way to describe it. APIs um, essentially allow services to communicate with each other. So you can have different programs and applications talking to each other. It stands for application programming interface. Um, just kind of setting the stage here. So software development has become a lot more complex and really collaborative over the years. You know, there's more developers in software now than there's ever been in any point in history. So there's no longer a need to create every single service from scratch. Somebody's already done it. And if they want you to be able to use it, they'd create an API so that you'd be able to use this without having to know how their service was set up on the back end. So uh, different services like Google, Twitter, um, probably a lot of sites and services you use create APIs to allow developers to access them without having any prior knowledge of how a code base has been implemented. <laughs> so. On a high level, an API really serves as a way to communicate between a client and a server. Um, and one way that we can think about this is as a digital restaurant. So if I am at my favorite restaurant and I'm gonna order something, I can't just go directly to the kitchen and say, hey, make me this. Oftentimes, you're going to have to either talk to the person who's at the front counter or a waiter. So if I want to make a request for food from the kitchen, I will talk to the waiter. And the waiter is going to go back to the kitchen and either bring me what I asked for or tell me, we don't have that today. Can you ask for something else? Uh, additionally, if I'm asking for something where I might need some authorization, say I want to order a drink at this restaurant, um, they're going to ask for my ID first to figure out if I actually, you know, I'm authorized, if I'm of legal age to be served alcohol at this restaurant. So APIs also handle a bit of authentication to make sure you're actually allowed to get the data that you're asking for in this scenario. So we can also think of APIs in a more technical way as well. So uh, let's just kind of think through an Instagram post. So if I'm going to make a post on Instagram, there's three main things that are happening. First, Instagram is going to request access to my camera on my phone so I can actually take the photo. And then after I've taken that photo, it goes back on Instagram. I add all of my filters. I basically do all the things I want to do to make it an actual post. And then when I click post, it gets uploaded to a remote server on that remote server then it's finally uploaded to the wider social network and people can look at it, like it, share it, all that kind of stuff. So in this scenario, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of moving parts. How many APIs do you think are being used? Yo, nice. It's three. Um, 
Does anyone want to identify which things are using an API? <laughs> See, I totally guessed, but I think maybe Instagram and the camera and then whatever the backend server database thing is. Boom, exactly. Um, so the camera is using the hardware API um, that's on your phone. Instagram has its own API and then uh, the remote server has an API as well. Also, y'all are so supportive of, e of each other in the chat. I love this. <laughs> Normally when I do these workshops, the chat is like dead <laughs> until somebody has a question. But I love the support that's going on. It's so good. We chose the right org because we are free chill family. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we talked about APIs and kind of this high level. Um, there's an API for everything. And when I say that, I really do mean like everything. Um, one of my favorites that's on this list is the cat API. It shows you different pictures of cats and you can also upload pictures of cats. You can find pictures of my cats on the cat API. Um, but there's probably some other services that you've used before that have an API like Spotify, Twitter, Facebook, Discord. Um, but it's not just you know platforms that have these. It's different tools like YouTube to MP3, which converts different YouTube links to MP3 files. Um, really, if there's anything that you use and you wanna add it into your applications or your programs, you can just Google the name for it and search API as well. And there's probably an API with its own documentation for you to use. The nice thing about APIs is that they basically turn software into Lego bricks. So instead of having to write so much code from scratch, um, which depending on what kinds of things you're doing, if you're trying to make uh, security, for example, there's some things that you shouldn't make on your own. Um, and I'm sure you probably ran into this when using different libraries in software as well. Uh, the same thing applies with certain APIs. You know, there's certain things you shouldn't make on your own and leave it to the people that have spent years fine tuning this one service. Uh, to be able to use that service in your own software. So we kind of just take bits and pieces now in a lot of software development to create the overall product, which makes software development a lot faster than it used to be. So we talked about APIs in a very high level context and kind of gave some examples of different APIs that we use. But now let's talk about it in the driest terms possible. So an API is a mediator between a client and a server to provide access to data and services. So a client can be anything from a website to a mobile app to your web browser. And the client makes requests to API endpoints on the server. Um, so whatever the application or service that you're trying to reach will have API endpoints. We're gonna be using Postman as a client today and we're gonna make requests and we're gonna retrieve, add, update and delete data all in one workshop. So before we move forward, what's Postman? I work at Postman, what is it? So Postman is a collaborative API development platform and it really streamlines and simplifies the creation and overall development and testing of an API by putting it into a UI. So, in, in the old days, if you wanted to work with an API, you had to use a command line tool called curl. And if you've ever worked with command line, uh, you know how difficult it can be to do a lot of things. Um, as useful as a command line can be, it can tell you a lot of information. You also have a harder time editing your mistakes, um, making different changes. And sometimes the output is just really hard to read. And when it came to working with APIs, it was really difficult to work with them in the command line directly. So Postman came along as a GUI basically so that you're able to not just look at um, a black box, but you're able to put things in a way that makes sense in this nice little UI and all of your requests, all of your responses are wrapped up nicely for you so that you can easily access and utilize the data that you're getting back. So we talked about APIs. Now let's talk about requests and responses. 
So requests are how we interact with the API. Um, there's three main ingredients to make a request. You need your get methods, uh, these method, your HTTP methods. These methods are basically actions or verbs. Uh, we're telling the API what we're planning on doing. Um, we have our endpoint, which is often in the URL. You can think of it as an address. This is where we're going to have our interaction with the API. And then we have our path, and that's kind of the specific place within that endpoint that can execute the method that you're requesting. Uh, and all of this is gonna make a lot more sense in the next couple of slides. So HTTP methods specify what we want from the API. Um, there's, there's a lot <laughs> of methods, um, but the four that you're going to come across the most are gonna be get, which is how we get information, post, which is how we send information, put, which is how we update information, and delete, which is how we delete information. Luckily, these are all very straightforward with their naming conventions. Next up, we have endpoints and paths. So this is where our interaction takes place with the API. So an endpoint is really a channel of communication for the API. It's an address, um, typically a URL. And if we're thinking about this as an address, say an address to a building, um, then the path would be the suite number. Say we're sending something, a piece of mail somewhere. Um, your endpoint is gonna be the overall address, maybe to uh, an office building, but the path is gonna be the suite number. It's gonna be the actual place where you want this piece of mail, your message to get sent. Um, so we want to go to suite 300, not suite 500, because suite 500 won't know what to do with this piece of mail. They don't handle that. That's basically what the path does. Um, the path is the destination on that endpoint where your request can be executed. So in this example, LinkedIn.com is our endpoint. So we'd be using LinkedIn API. Um, the path is feed. So when you log into LinkedIn, the path that you automatically see is feed. That's what's on your homepage. So there's a couple of things I can do on the feed. I can get all the information that's on there. I can also make new posts that get added to my feed. However, I can delete some of the post. I can delete my own post. I can't delete other people's post um, because that's not what you can do on the path. You don't have those permissions. Um, so this is just one example of how the path can take some uh, request, but not all. So now that we've kind of set the stage for what a request is, we're going to talk a little bit about the details. Um, query parameters are one of the most useful parts of uh, specifying detail for your request. If I'm working at Amazon and I need to get specific users, I don't want to just do one GET request to get all the users. That's so many users. Instead, I'm going to want to use a query parameter to filter out everybody else except the person that I'm actually searching for. So a query parameter uh, lets you search, essentially, and shift and filter through the data that you're getting back in your request. Um, we can also specify some other aspects of our request, um, general filters depending on what the API is. Next up, we have authorization. So this is a really long, long in-depth topic that we can't cover all of it in a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, but essentially authorization, like how I was saying in that example at the restaurant, the API can handle some authorization just to make sure that you're actually allowed to do the things that you're trying to do. Um, the most common way that you're going to find authorization in an API is through an API key. These are typically just a string of numbers and letters that are generated by the API um, just to track what requests that you're making. Um, one thing about API keys is that they're also made to rate limit to make sure that you're not, you know, overloading their servers. Um, another thing with API uh, authorization is OAuth, which is a lot more in depth. Um, this is oftentimes what you'll need if, say, you're using Twitter, for example, and you want to make, you want to post tweets from an account using an API, um, and you're posting these tweets programmatically. 
So it's pretty important uh, to make sure that you're posting tweets on an account that you actually have access to and not just anybody's account. So OAuth is a more detailed type of authorization that uses uh, different tokens and IDs uh, and client uh, secret tokens, <laughs> lots of different aspects to it. Um, the important thing about these additional aspects in OAuth authorization is that it would go into the header of your request. So headers and the body both are ways to put metadata into your request. Um, the way that we're going to be building a request is with a URL. And so some authorization, like an API key, can just go directly in the URL and it can be a query parameter. Other forms of authorization, like OAuth, should not uh, be in your URL. It needs to be hidden to keep it secure. So you would put that in your header for your request. The body of your request is how you send specific data. So headers, we would send things like authorization information. Body, we would send things like details to create a new user in a database, for example. So we're gonna be messing around with the body of a request today because this is what you use in put and post request. So when we make a request to a server through the API, we're not just calling out to the void because in this case, the void is calling back to us because we're getting a response. So responses have a couple of elements. First element that is probably the most important to point out is the status code. This lets you know what happened when you did your request. This is, if you don't get anything else from your response, you'll get a status code. And you've probably come across some of these before, like 404 not found or 403 forbidden. Um, but some of the ones you probably haven't come across before are 200 okay, which would be like, yeah, everything's good. We're all right. Or 201 created, you successfully created something new, like create a new user in a database. Responses also have headers, just like with requests, they store metadata. And then with a response, you also get body data. Normally this is in JSON format, but it can sometimes be in HTML format and sometimes even be in uh, XML. Um, most of the time it's JSON. And this body data is how you get data back, basically. The response will give you a body. And if that body has data in it, you'll be using that data programmatically for your programs. So we're just going to jump right in and we're going to make some requests. So I'm going to share the repository that we're going to be using in the chat. So in order to move forward in this uh, workshop, I would like everybody to fork this collection. Um, to give you some context, when we go on to Postman, um, and if you need a little bit of time to quickly create an account, no worries. Um, when we go into this link on Postman, it's in what's called a workspace. And if you're familiar with GitHub, a workspace is pretty much similar to a repository. Um, inside we have, inside our workspace, we have a couple of different folders. We've got Postman APIs 101, building an API, basics of API, advance of API. These folders are called collections and collections are pretty much exactly what they sound like. They are a collection of things. In this case, a collection of API request. So we're going to fork the basics of API. And just like in GitHub, you'll give your fork a label or your new branch a label. So I'll just say retail. And then you'll have a workspace to select here at the bottom. So because I am one of the admins on getting hands dirty with APIs, I can add it here. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm going to select my APIs 101 workshop. Um, if you have just created an account or you don't really use Postman a whole lot, you probably just have my workspace and that is totally fine to put your uh, forked collection there. But in order to follow along and actually do some work um, in this workshop, you're going to have to fork your collection. So I click fork. And then 
the screen will take me to my private workspace and show me my collection. So let's see what we've got here. So if I click on um, the collection, I have one request. Before we jump into things, I'm actually going to add one more request. I'll say get Google. So I'm going to do a get request to google.com. We'll see what we get back. So we can see status 200 OK. Everything was good when we did that. And down here, we have some HTML as the response because we're you know, getting a web page. So because it's HTML, we can actually click on this preview tab down here. And it will show you a rendered version of the HTML. Um, so I can actually see what the Google website looks like. Now, Google is a search engine. So I'm going to want to search something. And in order to search, you use Q as your query parameter and what you want to search. So I'm going to go ahead and click send. Now, when I do this, I want you to note, I just see that Postman is in the search bar down here, but I don't actually have the search results for Postman from Google. Does anyone have any ideas for why that is? Is it because you haven't posted it yet? Haven't posted it. Or like uh, you send a request, but yeah, I'm not sure. So I sent the request and I got back uh, Postman in my search like box. Um, but the thing is, google.com is just our endpoint. And like I said before, the endpoint is basically the address. Um, but in order for our request to be heard, it needs to go to the specific suite, in this case, a path. So the path in this case is actually search. When I click send, now I actually have all of my search results. So a fun fact about when you're working with really anything online, when you're using a browser and you go to a website, you're doing get request. Um, every web service, every web application that exists has an API internally built in to manage the website. And so when you go to a website, you're doing a get request. When you are adding, when you're creating a new account, you're doing a post request. Um, so we're working with APIs all the time. We just don't actually know it. So now let's work directly with an API. So I'm going to click on where the little arrow is, but not on the arrow, because I want to go back to the home. So this might already be open for you. If it's not and it's closed kind of like this, you can click on the top here. This is the documentation for the API we're going to be using. It is a joke API. This is the endpoint URL. So we can just, <laughs> excuse me, click on that, jump right in. Um, it can be slow sometimes. <laughs> so hey there, simple demo API. Um, one of my colleagues made this. So this is an API where you can send jokes and, hmm? and we got our endpoint. We have a path and on this path, we're actually gonna be able to do all of the things. We can get data, we can send, delete and update data as well. So going through this, I'm gonna just go and just copy this. If I go ahead and send this, I just get the home page back because the actual path is joke. So if you run this on your own, um, you'll notice you have a different joke than what I have um, because it only shows you one random joke. We have a couple there up to three. Um, so I can get a couple of jokes. Let's see. I can also get a specific joke 
So if I go back to the documentation, and I'm actually going to be referring to the documentation throughout the rest of this workshop, because when you're working with an API, the documentation is going to have all of the information. It's kind of like a menu of options for what your API can do. So I can get specific jokes as well by doing another forward slash and just saying the ID. So let's go ID three, because I know that joke exists. And now I got that specific joke. And if I send it a couple of times, it'll just continue to give me the same joke back. Now, that's fun and all. We, we can get jokes, but let's, let's create some jokes. You seem like a group of people that got jokes. So <laughs> I'm going to click on these three dots. And I'm going to click Add Request. And I'll just go ahead and say, create joke. Now I'm going to click on the drop down function right here and click on post. And you'll see that it updates up here, but it doesn't on this side. Got to save it. And we're using that same URL. So API uh, joke API demo. And joke is the path where we're going to be sending things. So I can go ahead and just click send here. But you'll notice I get 400 bad requests because we're not listening to the syntax. I didn't actually send anything with my request. I just said, I want to make a joke. So if I go back to the documentation, I'll see that there's an example for what the body looks like. So this is the syntax. Um, if you're familiar with JSON, you'll know that it's a key value pair system. So these are the keys that are inside and these are the values that we can assign. Um, all of these things are going to be required in order to successfully make a joke. So you can go ahead and just copy and paste this. And where you're gonna paste it, something I forgot to mention is within the Postman UI, this top half is basically where our requests take place. This bottom half is where our responses will be. So you'll notice there's a body down here and there's headers down here and there's a header up here and bodies down here. I said that backwards, body headers. <laughs> um, I'm gonna click on the body tab um, in the request area. I am in the wrong request. First, be in the right request, then click on body. And so I'm going to click on raw. And on this dropdown, I'm going to select JSON, and that's the format. So I can just copy and paste here. Um, there's already something that's using ID number one. So I got to make sure that I use a different ID. So I'll just use, uh, let's do 44. Um, and I'll change the author, me, May Air, and then I'll just come up with a joke. Whoop, I messed up my own joke. I used to work in the game industry before I <laughs> worked in education. Um, I don't know what that apple does, but when you remove it, everything breaks. Yeah, you'll, you'll notice in a lot of games, there's just uh, different things that feel like they're out of place. And the answer 99% of the time is nobody knows why that thing keeps the game held together, but it does, so it stays. <laughs> And then I'll put me, I'm the source. So I'm just going to go ahead and click send. And I get status 201 created. So a new resource has been created, in this case, my joke. Um, congratulations to me. Now I'm going to go and get a specific joke. I'm going to get my joke. I'll click send. Um, if you just did this, 
it might take a little bit of time to update. If it says that your joke does not exist, just kind of try a couple of times and it will show up. Um, there we go. There's my joke. Congratulations to me. Now, I would love to see what wonderful jokes you've all come up with. So if you could tell me the ID of your joke and drop it in the chat below, I'd love to see it. Let's see, Anna's got one. Uh, how do I say your name is an Anch? Yeah, Anch. Nice. Anch got one. Okay. Let's do Anna's. What do you kind what do you call a blind deer? No idea. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. <laughs> I knew y'all would have jokes. Okay, let's see what Ansh got. Ah, let's see. You know what's odd? Every num every other number got him. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> just, just uh, seeing the chat, <laughs> seeing the chat go. <laughs> All right, we've got uh, so we've got a couple of jokes. Um, let's see here. I can now update my own joke. Um, I'm going to add a request, update joke. I'm going to click on that drop down, click on put. And then, oh, bye, Zachary. Have a great time. Oh, and just like that, he's gone. <laughs> um, just going to take this endpoint. Now with, but before when we were getting specific jokes, we would put it in our get request. We would put the number down. Um, with put request, uh, we're actually going to be replacing all of the information uh, in this one specific area. So we don't need to specify the joke number. Um, we can just specify all of that information. So go ahead and just copy and paste whatever you had in your body for your create joke request. And you can, oh, let me save this real quick. You can put that in the body under raw, JSON here and make whatever, whatever little tweaks you wanna make. Um, let's see. I, need, I really need to start preparing more jokes for these workshops. I, I've been like cycling through the last uh, couple workshops with the same jokes and I need fresh ones. Um, yeah, <laughs> if anyone has any ideas for how to make this joke different, I, I am all ears. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna put game developer um, instead of game dev, and I'm gonna change the source from me to me. I'll just save that and I will go ahead and send that. So when you update something, um, in this particular case, we don't get a response back. So it's important to look at the status because the status is telling us that everything was okay with 204, no content. So everything was successful. Everything went the way it's supposed to. We're just not getting any content back in the response. So if I go back to my joke, I can see a few uh, changes that I made are now updated. Um, if anybody has any updates or if anyone has any more jokes that they created that they want to share, please drop, drop your ID below. Okay. Boop, boop. That you updated it. And now it says not odd. 
before it said odd. <laughs> Anch, get it? Because Zachary I... left because of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow, y'all are a tough crowd on Ansh. <laughs> well, now that we have added jokes, we can also delete them. So I'm going to add another request. And let's see, delete joke. Go to that drop down, click on delete. Wow, everyone, everyone seems to be very excited for uh, Anch to delete this. And just like before, I'm gonna go to the documentation and see what we do. So, in this URL, if we want to delete, we include the ID and that's it. We just include the ID of the joke we want to delete after going to the joke path. So I'm going to delete my joke. I'm going to save this first. I'm going to click send and status 200 okay. It was successful. Uh, joke with ID 44 is deleted. So <laughs> should should we check to see that Ansh's joke has been deleted? <laughs> Just in case. Okay. But let's let's go for it. Joke not found. <laughs> the joke is gone now. All right. So we did it, y'all. We we got some data. We created some data. We updated it and we deleted it. I'm gonna go back to this presentation now. Oop. And just to give a little recap of the other stuff that we covered, we talked about methods and addresses, also known as anyone have the answer? endpoints. Uh, we talked a little bit about parameters, authorization, and body data. Um, the irony about talking about authorization is that we didn't use any authorization because this API didn't require authorization. Uh, so technically, I can delete everybody's joke. In fact, <laughs> this is something that I keep forgetting to do during workshops. So I'm just going to do it right now. Flush. I've deleted everybody's joke. You all did great though. All right, so let's see what, what we got in this chat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to delete everyone's joke. We use the same API for all of our workshops, <laughs> at least all of our API 101 workshops. So, if you want to keep learning a little bit more about APIs, you can create a public workspace with a collection using any API of your choice. And if you send it to us, we'll send cool swag to the coolest project. Uh, this can be a tough task for me sometimes because I'm the person that has to go through and judge them. Um, one of the last workshops, I got like three really strong submissions, two of which were involving cats. And I was like, mm but I love cats. <laughs> um, so I imagine y'all could create some really cool things as well. Um, if you need ideas for any APIs to try out, uh, I have this wonderful list here and I will be sending these slides uh, back uh, to, who am I sending these to? Tristy. Um, wait, did I say yes. your name right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'll be sending these back to Shristi um, so okay. she can send them out to everybody. And you can click on these lovely links instead of having to Google everything. Yep. And we'll probably put the recording up on our YouTube channel as well. 
um, on Ellen, yes. Um, and then we'll send you that link as well, May, if you want it. I would love that. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so if there's also any other APIs that you want to try out and make something cool with, um, it doesn't have to be cats. Cats are very popular, though. Um, there are a couple of options that you have. One of my favorite is uh, Smash Lounge. It's just like different information about Smash characters. Uh, I am a big fan. Dog API. Ooh, if you make something with the dog API, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to think about it. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, so Anch likes to play Smash with DLC characters. I think this is pay to win. What is your thoughts? <laughs> My thoughts is that this question is above my pay grade. <laughs> Ash was just salty because he keeps losing. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I I do love a good game of Smash, um, but I don't. I'm not. I'm not very good at it. I just know how to play as Captain Falcon. Good character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got in the chat? Thank you, Shristi. <laughs> um, all right, so we, we've done a lot of laughing today, um, but if you want to take your, for your learning even further, you can become a student expert. So our Postman student experts uh, do a self-paced training, and it takes anywhere between a day and a week to complete. I sent this out to a student once and he sent me back his finished collection, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, within an hour. And I was like, oh, that was fast. Um, but sometimes people, you know, get busy, takes a little bit longer. So within the student expert certification and training, it'll teach you a little bit more about sending sophisticated requests in Postman, uh, just more complex ones. You'll learn about writing documentation for a collection, kind of like the documentation we were using today. Um, we'll talk about basic test scripts. You'll also have the opportunity to run collections, uh, passing data between request um, and scripting request execution order to essentially uh, move data and utilize it from a request without needing to build out an actual program. I've actually done this before. I needed to keep track of tweets that our student experts were making because I just wanted to see what they're doing online. Um, and I was able to use the uh, Twitter API in Postman with a Slack webhook and just have that directly sent to Slack and do all of that in Postman without having to actually write a program out. It was very simple and has automated my life. And now I can actually see uh, when student experts post about being a student expert on Twitter. It's really cool. The reason that I'm checking for that isn't because I'm creeping on them, but it's because they get an open badge um, once they become a certified student expert. And so your open badge, you can post it on Twitter, you can post it on LinkedIn. We've actually had a couple of students get job interviews on LinkedIn because they had their student expert badge posted on their profile underneath their education as a certification. Uh, so companies do actually take this training very seriously as well. Um, and as a certified student expert, you have the option to become a student leader in your community through our student leader program, where you'll learn how to do different public speaking, event organizing, and workshops kind of like this one. So if anybody would like to apply, let me take this. I'll just put it in the chat if anybody is interested. And then finally, we have some other resources. So if you want to keep learning about uh, Postman and how to do different things in Postman or follow some tutorials, you can go to our learning center. We also have an API network, which shows some really cool things that companies are doing with Postman. Uh, Twitter has really uh, elaborate collections on the API network. And then if you have specific questions that can't be answered in this workshop, you can ask them in our community forum. So we got like a couple of minutes left. Does anyone have any questions?
I had a quick one about the student expert program. Mm -hmm. um, wait, so is there any like training involved? Like, do you have to attend some sort of training session or do you just kind of do the thing and, uh, and uh, submit the form? So it is a self-paced training. Um, oh, gotcha. So when you click on the application, um, you actually get a link to the training immediately. You don't have to be approved before starting the training. Gotcha. Um, but in order to get your student expert badge, you do have to submit your collection and there will be instru further instructions on how to do that. Got it, got it, thank you. Can, oh, oh sorry. Um, I was just wondering, can Postman, can Postman like interface with things like GraphQL? Yes, it can. Um, hold on, I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment because I'm going to find the document. I have gotten this question enough to prepare myself, but I still have not had the link readily available. So if you want to learn how to use uh, GraphQL with Postman, you can do that here, just underneath our learning center as well. And there is more information um, on the site as well about doing queries with GraphQL, getting started with templates and the like. Thanks. Yeah. I can go back to Sharon. Um, do we have any other questions? How did you get involved with um, doing this stuff for Postman? Uh, that's a great question. Um, oh, thank you, Amy. <laughs> um, so I actually was, I wasn't looking for a job at the time. I was just recruited by uh, my manager um, on LinkedIn. He reached out to me, saw that I had worked at GitHub Education doing very similar stuff, uh, working on the campus experts program there. And so I had been working for a little bit and was like, oh, sure. Yeah, I'll interview with you. <laughs> um, I used to post them in a lot when I was in college. I was lucky enough to have a class that actually was on Rust APIs. Um, so it, it was just a really good pair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, do we have any other questions? That's fun. <laughs> I think that's a good sign. Your presentation definitely like was very thorough and explained a lot. I think it was super interactive too, which everyone loved. Yeah, they want the LinkedIn, your LinkedIn. <laughs> they want my LinkedIn? Yes. <laughs> Let, let's go. I'm going to stop sharing. Again. <laughs> but super interactive. And I think everyone enjoyed it. So thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to add me on LinkedIn, I will gladly add you back. And last thing that I will share is this workshop link. If you could please give me your feedback about the workshop um, in this link, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you have any questions, uh, further questions for me that I did not cover, I will also put my email in. So yeah, uh, that's all that I had for y'all. Um, I can take any last minute questions or if not, uh, I'm seeing a bunch of LinkedIn requests. How nice. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll repost these links in our Slack as well to make sure they reach the rest of our members. Um, awesome. And also the we'll send you the YouTube when we're done uploading it. I'd love that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the workshop. I hope everyone enjoyed and uh, learned a little something. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, All right. Thank you.
Thank you. Have a good rest of your night, everyone. You as well, Bye. man. Take care. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming.